Okay, so let's say you're giving a table and you have two months in the table. Let's say something like, I don't know, December and January. And you're giving the high and low temperatures for each of those months. So maybe for December, the high temperature was 25 degrees and the low temperature was 10 degrees. Maybe in January, the high was 35 and the low 20. How would you create a double bar graph from this data? Well, the first thing I would do is set up my basic x and y axis, right? And then I want to think about, well, what should I put here on the x axis and what should I put on the y axis? Well, here on the x axis, usually I put some type of time. In this case, we're looking at months. And those months determine the dependent variable, the y axis, and that would be temperature. So I've, I've started to set this up. Next thing I might do is add in a title, like high and low temperatures, right, or average temperatures for months. Um, I would just put something simple, like high and low temperatures. Next thing you, I would do is I would look at the range. You know, how high do the high temperatures go and the low temperatures here? And that helps me decide on the y-axis here, how, what should my interval be? Once I know that the lowest is 10, the highest is 35, I think it's easy to go up by tens. So here's a zero point, then 10, right, 20, and 30, and 40. You can go up by fives as well. I'm just gonna put halfway hash marks in there. Now, with the months here, we're not using numbers, we're using categories. Just December, right, December, and January. Now for December, there's two temperatures, a high, right, and a low. So for the bar graph, what I would do is I would graph those out right next to each other. The high is 25, so it's about here, right, and the low is 10. So where is that? Well, that would be down here, right, approximately. And then for January, what happens? Well, for January, the high is 35. Right? And the low is 20. So maybe right there. And then what you want to do is set up some type of key. So we know, that's, that's not a good choice for color there, we know what the pink right, and the yellow represent. Or the, the in this case, I think it's more important to highlight right, the high versus the low. So what we can say in our key, if we want to set that up over here, maybe, and you always want to set up some type of key for a double bar graph. Maybe what I would say is that, okay, if you see something that's filled in, right, and I would probably only have one color, but if I had two colors, you can just draw that these two filled in colors represent the highs, the high temperatures. And then you could say, well, the empty box, right, or non-colored in box represents the low temperatures. And then you're basically all set because you know, for December, there's a high and a low, and the same thing for January. Notice that these, these bars are in groups, right? So the December bars are together, and there's a nice gap between categories. So the January temperatures are together. That's meant to help you read this chart. And since you'll probably be doing this with just color, well, we should be without color on your state test, for the key, you probably would only need one color, or just show that a shaded in bar means that you're looking at the high temperature of the month and that the non-shaded in bars represent the low temperature. That's how I would set up the key. And I think originally I said the key would tell you the difference between January and December. You don't need a key for that because we write those words down here. What we do need a key for is what does this bar mean, the filled in bar? Why is it higher than the other bar next to it? Well, that's what the key tells us, right? It says, oh, okay. These filled in bars are both the highs, and these non filled in bars are both the lows. So we can see that temperature spread from month to month. All right, hope that helped.